Welcome back, everyone. Um, we will start this second morning session with um, Dr. Michael Kunst, who is going to talk to us about Belbigus from Portugal. Thank you very much, Eve, and also thank you very much that you did invite me, such an old uh, man. I'm now retired from the German Archaeological Institute and in my 70th year. So, um, Belbica decorations at Zambujal, Portugal, possible foreigners and paradigms. In this, uh, I only want to mention now, uh, my forerunners, uh, Edward Sangmeister, uh, who directed also my doctoral thesis, and Hermann Fritz Schubert, took uh, excavations in 1964 and 1973. And I want to mention also Lionel Trindade, who had uh, found this site. And we all are a chain of investigators. And now uh, my follower will be uh, Thomas Schumacher and uh, it is very nice to see how also with the young generation all these things are uh, going on. In, in the Iberian Peninsula, pottery was introduced by the early Neolithic more or less from 5500 5, uh, 5, BC with impressed decorations especially by imprints of seashells, cardium eduli, therefore called cardial decoration. In the middle Neolithic layers of the Cueva de la Cariguela de Granada were found already decorations very similar to bell beaker ones, published by Manuel Pellicer in 1964. You can see it here on the, here. Um, Manuel Gongra published already in 1868 a series of organic finds uh, such as little bags made of esparto. Carmen Cacho and colleagues in 1996 could show that they were colored with different patterns but it was not possible to detect by chemical analysis what was the material of the color. Radiocarbon analyzes date them between 5,200 and 4,600 Calbi C. I show them because, in my point of view, the decoration pattern has certain similarities to later decoration of stone plaques and also to the cardinal pottery decorations. Uh, when you see, for example, this and that, and then you can keep in mind this decoration. In 2014, speologists found a cave site near Obejo, province of Cordoba, where uh, 2016 excavations took place, finding rests of different inhumations. Disarticulated bones of a minimum of five human individuals and various burial goods. There were found five textile fragments, one and four to the second. Uh, um, to the second half of the fourth millennium, Calbi C, and three and five. You see here the, the numbers I, I tell you one, two, four, five. Um, three and five to around 2,500 to 2,300 Calbi C. Let us say to the bell beaker time. All five textiles are woven in plain weaved or tabby. All five textiles are made of plant bust fibers, but still they could not be specified. Textile five is red colored by the mineral cinnabar, mercury sulfate, and the other textile fragments, there was no cinnabar detected. Northeast of the present day town of Lorca in nine, uh, 1984, four men from that town recovered in a small cave, Cueva Sagrada One, a, a, a Copper Age collective burial with numerous textile remains. 
1987 and 1988, under the direction of Jorge Juan Eiroa Garcia, excavations were carried out nearby in a Copper Age settlement on the Cerro de la Virgen de la Salud, dated to the period 2700 to 2300 Calbisi. In the first year, 1987, excavations were also carried out in Cueva Sagrada I. These excavations in combination to the finds of 1984 verified that there are remains of three children and two adolescents or young adults, a man and a woman whose bones show traces of burning. The well-known specialist for prehistoric textile remains in Spain, Carmen Alfaro Giner, was able to prove that the textile remains were two so-called tunicas woven from linen. All, altogether, a dress with a small cloak was reconstructed from, from them. Furthermore, red-dyed threads were found, which were irregularly worked into the fabric for decoration. You see it here. One radiocarbon date of an Esparto grass fragment is mentioned 3870 plus minus 100 BP. The date was calibrated according to different methods, whereby a mean date of approximately 2249 was arrived at. Typical for late Neolithic, early Chalcolithic burials in the southwest containing, gra containing graved stone plaques. Victor de Santos Gonçalves, professor emeritus of the University of Lisbon and founder of the Institute of Archaeology Archeolog there, co called UniArc, created the Placa Nostra project in 203. The aim of this project is a systematic documentation of all these stones plaques in form of a so-called corpus. Thus, he developed also a system for the description of the plaques here. Oops. No. no. Thus, he developed a system for the description of the plaques for classification aims. In this interpretations of these so-called idols, a specific role plays a mother goddess. You see here also the, the eyes represent, uh, represented and also here uh, in form of uh, holes, the, the eyes and with with these uh, parts. As you can see in the here presented examples, they are really representations of persons wearing a certain type of garment with decorations which show similarities to bell beaker pottery decorations, especially here, for example, and also these things. In the exhibition for the meeting of the Archaeology uh, Archaeologie et Goblet group at Torres Vedras in 2008, we made also a comparison to the steels from Petit Chasseur. Another project of Katina Lilius of the University of Iowa, USA, showed that as Victor Gonsalves, that there are corrections of some decorative motifs on the stone plaques, which indicate that they represent some kind of meaning. You see here, uh, for example, these parts, uh, they were divided into two, and here, this one, and here, there is later another uh, introduction of a thing. On the other hand, she shows that there are also a series of plaques with different numbers of decorated lines in the so-called core of the plaques. Classification of Victor Gonzalez, which you see here, two rows, three rows, four rows, two rows, 
oops, two rows, three rows, uh, and so on, and here the same. And uh, uh, she also told that uh, if you uh, could find in a region uh, the oldest megalithic, more or less in the middle of, uh, of that region, and others uh, around there, then you have the, the plaques with uh, less rows in the oldest one, and there can be also younger, uh, uh, also uh, um, plaques with more rows, but the other megalithic sites uh, uh, will um, um, uh, start with more rows. <coughs> okay. Until, rec <coughs> until recently, the engraved stone plaques were considered to belong to late Neolithic before Copper Age. But in the meanwhile, as a new article Victor Gonzalez shows, we may consider a chronology between 3200 and 2500 Calvi C. That means also a connection to the Bell Beaker time. As is shown also by the here mentioned Belbica grave with engraved chist plaques of the megalithic mon monument of Pera Branca de Montu. Also in Zambojal, there were documented three fragments of engraved chist plaques, but until now there is no sign of an occupation of a time before Copper Age. On the other hand, we can see that the spatial distribution of Belbica pottery is limited to a relatively small area of the site. The forerunner of the Belbica could be the so-called Copo Canelado, distributed in the beginning of, the, of Copper Age, mainly in the Portuguese region of Extremadura. Um, as Gonzalo Amari, Amaro did defend in his doctoral thesis, an idea which the first time was formulated by Beatrice Blanz in the 1960s. Also, we see that there could be an impact of the so-called acacia leaf decoration in bell beaker potteries. You see it here. As I could demonstrate in Zambujal, acacia leaf decorations were contemporaneous to the Corpus Canelados as well as to bell beaker pottery, but bell beaker substituted the Corpus Canelados, which had a different decorative style, and with them appeared also the technological, very advanced small cups with wall thicknesses of four millimeters and smaller, perhaps a foreign influence. Uh, whereas bell beaker decoration follows traditional designs of the Iberian Peninsula. Surprising was at Zambujal when I studied the bell beaker pot shirts that their wall thicknesses and vessel form seems to correlate to different decoration motifs. Triangles only with bowls, belts with crossed imprints together with shouldered bowls, and belts with simple pointed imprints, mostly alternating belts with imprints inclined to the right and the others inclined to the left with a typical bell beaker. Last not least, organizing the exhibition from 2016 until now in the Museum of Torres Vedas, working in the end of the afternoon soon before sunset, there became visible painted decorations on a cylindrical limestone idol, which are similar to bell beaker decorations. What is the conclusion of this talk? The bell beaker decorations seem to have also a certain meaning in such as the decorations of the decorated stone plaques, but their limitations to a certain area of a site such as Ambujal and also being grave goods, such as the decorated stone plaques, it might be that they played more a cultic or religious role than a role in normal day life. But the decorations of clothes could be totally different, as shown by the textiles of the Cueva Sagrada I from Lorca and the new ones of the Cueva de la Peña Calera, Obejo Cordoba also show uh, be uh, mentioned uh, also, also should be mentioned the finds of Montelirio, 
but that would excess the time of our conference. But the decorations of the stone plaques could be also decorations with a much more older background as in, is indicated by the early Neolithic decorations of the Esparto vessel of the Cueva de los Murcielagos of Algunyol. As we see today, the textiles of the Catholic Church show that religious clothes can be differ very much from the everyday textiles. In this context, it is not so clear that we must imagine the dress of a Belbica warrior as it was reconstructed in the very impressive picture we show in the Torres Vedras exhibition, which was a reconstruction of a fantastic exhibition of the Archaeological Museum from Halle, which Harald Meller was so friendly to allow us to demonstrate. Thank you very much for your attention. Do we have any questions in person or online? Well, it is not really a, a question, it's just a remark you made on the shape and the decoration on the ceramics. And I did the same in Western France. What you show is a triangle on the ball and the hatchet band on the beaker. And uh, we okay. yes, just after this one, I think. And uh, just after that. Um... Shapes with different motifs. Um, oh, yes. Ah, this one. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's the exact same thing in uh, Western France, basically. What? It's, we have the exact same result in uh, Western France. Yes. Much more uh, triangle on the, the ball, on shoulder with ball, and much more archet band. And uh, it's also fit mostly with the decoration of the ceramics. Brownish color for the ball and shoulder with ball, um, and uh, red orange for the beakers. And that really <laughs> uh, is very interesting. Also, uh, Jan uh, showed us uh, in, an example that, that there are very very few uh, triangles on beakers uh, so this has a certain meaning thank you do we have another question otherwise we can 